Hey everyone, Vincent here from the creative and today's video tutorial we're going to be covering a plugin called Form by Trapcode. This is a paid plugin, so you're not going to have it by default. And we're just going to be covering the basics on Trapcode Form. Now, I know I did a video tutorial on this before previously, but it wasn't very well explained, very well scripted, and it was just a very fast moving tutorial, very fast pacing. So, in this video tutorial, I'm going to try to slow it down a little bit and, you know, explain it a little bit better. Now, coincidentally, I'm using Trapcode Form version 2.0, so there's been some new features added. We're not going to be uh, looking at all the new features and all that stuff. We're going to be looking at the overview of Trapcode Form. So regardless of what version you have of Trapcode Form, you should be able to follow along and, and learn something aside from the version you have. So this is great for beginners in Trapcode Form. So let's hop into After Effects right here. And we have a default composition set up, nothing special. And this is Trapcode Form at its default setting. So I did not change a single thing. I just dragged Trapcode Form into the new layer right here. And we have our default settings for Trapcode Form. Now the first parameter is the base form. Now it's very, very self-explanatory. It is the, pretty much the base of form or the structure of form where we can configure how wide something is, how big something is, how many particles and such and all that such. So the first setting right here is the size and size in X, size in Y and size in Z, which pretty much control how wide form it actually is or how tall or, or how high or low trap code form is and how deep is trap code form, so the depth. Now, by default, we have three particles and Z. So if I get the camera tool right here and just rotate around this thing, you can see that form by default gives us three grids of particles. And that is important because if you go back to form, you can see that we have particles in Z equals to three. So this value rate, the particles in X, Y, and Z, pretty much determine how many particles are in the same axis. So right now we have 70 particles in the x-axis. Now if we increase that, it's going to add more particles in the x-axis. And if we decrease that, it's going to decrease the number of particles in the x-axis. Uh, Self-explanatory for the y and z as well. So we can increase the number of particles in the y-axis, the z-axis, and also the x-axis. Very, very handy feature. I'm going to set the particles in z to 1, just for now. And now we have our center X and Y, which pretty much defines the center of form. Uh, very important if you want to orbit something or maybe use it as an anchor point, etc. And center is Z. Pretty much controls where it is in Z space. We also have the basic parameters of X rotation, Y rotation, Z rotation. Very explanatory. You can rotate it in whatever axis you want. And we have string settings next, which is not editable at all until you enable box grid to box strings. Now by default, if I reset form again, you can see that we have a grid of particles and that's because it's set to box grid. If we set it to box strings, and we just zoom in here a little bit, you can see that our particles are not no longer particles, but rather they're string particles. And I'm just gonna uh, decrease the size a little bit so you can kind of see. We can go down to the string settings right here and as you can see, it's now edible. So we can now disable or lower the density. So we have less density of strings size randomness and size distribution. So as you can see here, we don't essentially have a grid of particles. We actually have a series of strings and we can increase the density to add more particles into the strings. So we have some default strings here. Pretty useful for lasers such as what Corridor Digital did. So pretty cool feature. I'm going to reset it once again and we're going to dive down to the next section, the particles section right here. And again, this is very self-explanatory. This is where we define our particles. So we can select the particle type to whatever we want. We can select the particles. By default, they're spheres right now. They're little circle spheres. We can change it to star. And now all the particles are stars. And you may not be able to see it that well. Let me just uh, decrease the particles in the axis. So if you look very, very closely, they're not necessarily spheres anymore. They're actually little star particles. And you can also define a custom particle if you want. It's a sprite fill right here, or a sprite, or a textured polygon. So you can actually create your own particle and use form and tell it to use a custom particle. Very, very handy little feature right here. We just have rotation. So you can rotate the particles around a little bit. You can rotate the stars. We have the size of the particle, so you can increase the size of the stars if you wanted to. As well as size randomness to give it a little more uh, diversity, some randomness, the opacity of the particles, and also the color of the particles, as well as the transfer mode. So we can change uh, it from whatever transfer mode we want. So we can change it to normal 
or whatever places what you need. Usually add seems to work the best, kind of blends in nicely because they're particles. We also have the glow feature, which is handy for creating glows. Now, I don't believe this feature is available for the previous version. But I think it's only for 2.0. So I'm going to go down to the shading. This is also a new feature in 2.0, which allows you to shade the particles using lights in After Effects. Now, this is very, very similar to a particular 2.0 where we have shading. Very, very handy. You need some lights for it, though. So I'm going to create a new light for it. Layer new lights. And we're just gonna make it uh, a point light. It's fine. Hit OK. And I can, as you can see now, we have a little bit more shading around. And if we just move around the light, you can see what effect it has on our particle. It's a pretty, pretty cool feature in Form 2.0. We have the shading option now. So let's scroll down to the OBJ settings. Actually, the OBJ settings is not something included in previous version of Form. It allows you to actually import an OBJ file from a 3D program. It allows you to set or map form to a 3D object, such as a cube or a car or whatever you want. So let's scroll back into form right here. I'm going to close some of these tabs. Uh, we've already gone through them. Now, quick maps and layer maps are essentially the same thing. Now, we can go into very great detail on what uh, layer maps are and quick maps are, but essentially it's using another layer or another map to map an action. So you can use like another layer to map the, the opacity, the displacement, the fractal field. Uh, pretty much it's just using another layer to control form, pretty much essentially. We have the audio react tab, which I spend most of my time in. Uh, this is what a lot of people use TrapCut form for, and it's audio visualization or audio reaction. So you can actually make form react to audio. Uh, you can select your audio layer here. And in the reactors, you can set what the reactor does or what the action should do. So you can set the uh, reactor 1 to uh, particle size, you can set reactor 2 to displacement, and all these things are going to affect our form layer because of our audio. Now, I have a separate tutorial on audio reaction with form, so you can check that out on creativevideo.net. Now, dispersion twist is something very, very interesting, and it's very, very straightforward. Pretty much disperses the particles out a little bit. Pretty cool for uh, exploding text or something with particles exploding grids a particle and twist essentially just twist all of our particles together. You can create some pretty abstract things using trap code form, especially with the twist feature. Uh, you can learn a lot from Harry Frank, who's a trap code master, especially at form in particular. He goes over some pretty nice techniques on creating abstract things with trap code form, especially with the twist feature. Now, next section is the fractal field. And this is where I completely spent almost all my time in form in. And fractal field is an area where you want to be in most of the time because it allows you to really mess up form in a good way. Uh, you can change the effect size to whatever you want. It pretty much just affects our size using our fractal displacement. So it's going to affect the size of the particle. So some particles are going to be smaller or larger than others. You can also affect uh, through the opacity. So the fractal field is going to affect the opacity of all the little layers right here. And the displace pretty much just messes this thing up. So again, you can see that the displace uh, parameter right here can allow you to create some very interesting abstract designs. And it kind of just, it's pretty much the life, in my opinion, the displacement, the fractal field section of form is pretty much the life of trap code form. This is where all the action happens and this is where all the distortion happens rather than some plain flat grids of particles. And of course, by default, you can displace it on X and Y and Z linked together, or you can just break the link. So you can go to X, Y, Z individual and you can pretty much displace it individually in whatever axis you want. For an example, if I just want to displace the x axis, I have the option now just to displace the x axis. Or if I just wanted to displace the y axis, I have the option to just displace the y axis. Now, trap code form is very animatable. So it, it does animate, and you can animate it, and it animates very, very well by default. And by default, it just kind of moves around. And that's pretty much the flow. It's just in a uniform way, just flowing around. Now, you can actually control this kind of flow of motion. Now you have to flow in X, Y, and Z. So if you just decrease the flow in Z, it's gonna animate negative in Z space. Or if you want your form layer to flow to the right, you simply just increase the flow in X, and that will essentially just make your particles flow to the right, as seen here. So it's pretty much just controlling the animation or the flow of form by default. And of course, you can change the speed of the flow, 
with the flow evolution. You can also offset the evolution to whatever you wish. And of course, you can always loop the flow to repeats after whatever, how many intervals you want. And the rest of the settings are very, very complicated. There's a whole bunch of description on this. Uh, it just takes so much to explain what these settings do. But of course, you can play with it. I like to play with the F scale and the complexity most of the time, so check that out. Uh, we'll go over this a little bit later. The spherical field allows you to add a sphere or a spherical field to your form layer. So if I just increase the strength, you can see that kind of breaks and makes a little hole or sphere in our fractal field. And of course, you can change the scale and all that great stuff and the rotation. Very, very, gives it a nice, interesting look again, building an abstract look. Kaleidoscope allows you to make a kaleidoscope look. Pretty much mirrors everything and creates some interesting, again, abstract design. I believe that Chuck Good Form really aims towards motion graphics rather than um, compositing. And of course, the World Transform allows you to transform or move this thing in a 3D environment. So you can rotate it in the X, uh, the Y, and so on and so forth. You can control the scale and, of course, the offset of everything. So already you kind of have this abstract look. You can make this a wallpaper, whatever you want. Visibility is pretty much settings for their camera, where it's going to vanish, where the near vanish is, pretty much depth of field and all that great stuff. And of course, rendering controls, if you want to render the depth of field, full render, or a motion preview, which is a light preview version. You also have the transfer mode of the overall form. So if you want to render this thing as a additive transfer mode, you also have options for the opacity overall, as well as the motion blur. So very, very quick overview of Trap Good Form. I hope this is a better overview than the first one I did. I just wanted to cover some of the basic settings and what they kind of do in general. Of course, if you want a more specific tutorial, you can always leave a comment down below and I'll do it. Or if you have a question or something about anything like audio reaction or layer maps, I actually already have a tutorial on audio visualization and audio reaction and layer maps on Trap Good Forms. So check it out, creativebuilder.net. This is just a quick little overview of Trap Good Form in a nutshell. Uh, nothing too complicated here. I just wanted to give you guys a brief overview about it. So thanks for watching, guys. For more video tutorials, check it out, creativebuilder.net. I'm Vincent Wynn, and I'll see you guys next time.